Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to my Docker Essential series. I'm very excited because in this video, we're actually going to walk through the process of installing Docker. And by the end of this video, we'll have run our very first container, a test container, to make sure that everything is working. Basically, we'll be setting the foundation up that we'll be using for the remainder of the series. So let's go ahead and dive back into Docker. This section is for those of you that are running Windows 10. I am going to show you how to set up the Docker desktop software on Windows. And the process on Windows is fairly straightforward. So what we're going to do is open up a web browser. It doesn't matter which one. I have Firefox here, so I'll open that. And then we'll go to docker.com. And then we'll click on Get Started. And if you scroll down, you'll see a download button that should automatically detect your operating system. Save the file. And that was pretty quick, so I will open up the downloads folder here. And it should just be a matter of installing the application from the downloaded setup file. So I'll double click on it. And I'm just going to leave all of the options here at their default, so I will click OK. All right, so the process has finished. It's asking us to restart, and it's even created a desktop icon. That's pretty cool, so I will go ahead and let it restart. All right, so I've rebooted. And we should be good to go. So at this point, we're going to double click on the desktop icon to launch the Docker desktop, but it's not going to work quite yet. There's one more thing that we need to do. We're going to get this pop up right here that's telling us that the installation is incomplete. It's going to give us a link on that pop up to download the remaining component. So basically, I've downloaded the kernel update package that it's recommending I install. I'm just going to go ahead and launch the installer for it. Then I'll click Finish. And I'll click on the Restart button here. And now it's brought me to this screen right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to show you how to run a container to test that Docker is working. I'll just click the Start button, and then I'll type CMD. Here's the command prompt. I'll go ahead and open it. So now we should have the Docker command available. So I will type Docker and press Enter. And sure enough, it's giving us a list of options that we can use with the Docker command. So what I'm going to do to make sure that Docker is working is I'll type Docker, then a space, and then the keyword run. And then the name of the container that I want to run is hello-world. And then I'll press enter. Let's see what happens. And it's downloading the container image. And it's already run it. So although this container doesn't really do much, all it does is print the message that you see on the screen right now. It's enough to verify that Docker is in fact working. So if all you needed was a walkthrough on how to install the Docker desktop software on Windows, then, well, you're ready to move on to the next video, and you could do that right now. But if you are curious how to set up Docker on other operating systems, specifically macOS and Ubuntu, then feel free to watch the next two sections in this video.
In this section, we'll walk through the process of setting up the Docker desktop software on macOS. So here on the screen, I have Safari open and I've navigated to docker.com. So of course, that's the first step. And then you can click on get started. And if you scroll down, it should automatically detect the operating system that you're running. Now normally all you should have to do is click the button right here where it reads download for Mac. And if your Mac has an Intel processor, then that should be exactly what you should do. But if you are an early adopter of a Mac with the M1 processor, then as of the time I'm recording this video, this version will not work for you. If you do have a Mac that has the M1 processor, hopefully by the time you're watching this video, they've already updated the version on their download page to be compatible with the M1 processor. As for me, the Mac that I'm recording this footage from is one of the Macs with the M1 processor, so I won't be clicking the button right here. So what I'm going to do on my end is download the latest preview build for the M1 specific version, and that's the process that I'm going to walk you through. But again, if your Mac has an Intel processor, then that shouldn't be necessary. You can just click the download for Mac button and then install it. So what I'm going to do in a new tab here, I'm just going to search for Docker desktop, Mac M1, and let's see what happens. And the first result here is the one I want. This should take me to the preview build for the Apple M1 version. I'll click on the download button. And once you've finished downloading the Docker desktop software, you should have an icon for it in your downloads folder. I have mine here on the desktop, so I'll double click on it. And then as you can see right here, this is the preview build. It actually tells you that twice. We have preview right here and also right here. And it's kind of funny because it looks like the Minecraft font to me, unless I'm imagining it. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and drag that into the applications folder here. All right, so the process should be finished. So I'll double click on the docker.app right here. And I'll just click OK. It wants my password basically to install the system helper tool. And I can see the Docker icon animating right here. So I'll give that a moment to finish what it's working on. All right, so here I will skip the tutorial. We don't need to do that. In fact, what I'm going to do is close it, and then I will open up a terminal. I have iTerm right here, and then I'll just blow up the font size, make sure you guys can see this, and we should have the Docker command at our disposal now. Let's see, and there it is. So let's go ahead and give it a test run and make sure that it's working, and that's very easy to do. So I'll type Docker, and then run. And then the container that I want to run is hello-world. And what it's going to do is download this container and then run it. It should happen pretty fast. So now it's downloading it. And there you go. We have successfully run a container on our Mac. And even though I'm using the preview version for the M1 Mac, the process should be relatively similar for you even if you're not using this and you're using the normal version on an Intel Mac. And at this point, you should have run your first container like I've done here. In this section, we're going to go ahead and get Docker installed on Ubuntu. And on my end, I'm actually using an Ubuntu laptop but it really doesn't matter what kind of computer it is, or even if it's a server or a virtual machine. The commands that I'm about to show you should work regardless of what you are installing Ubuntu on. And the only exception that I can think of off the top of my head is that you can't generally install Docker on an Ubuntu container, but it can be a VM, which is actually totally fine. So what I'm going to do is open up a terminal, and let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, we're going to make sure that our repository index is completely up to date. So sudo apt update. And now we're fully synchronized. And as you can see here, I have 41 packages that can be upgraded. So I highly recommend that you make sure that everything is fully up to date. 
So what we can do to take care of that is run sudo apt dist hyphen upgrade. And what this will do is make sure that all of the installed packages on the Ubuntu system are fully up to date with what's available on the repositories. So I'll press enter. Then enter again to accept the defaults. And I'm going to fast forward through this and I will be right back as soon as it's done. So all of the packages are now up to date. So what I'm going to do is reboot my laptop because you want to make sure that you take advantage of all of those security fixes. So what I'm going to do is close the terminal and I'll get this rebooted. Okay, so I'm back up and running and I'll get the terminal back on the screen. And let's continue. So at this point, now that we have updated all of the packages, we can go ahead and install Docker. And that's actually the easiest part of the entire process. All we have to do is run sudo apt install docker.io. And that's actually all there is to it. I'll press enter. And then I'll press enter to accept the defaults. So at this point, Docker should actually be installed. So now that we have Docker installed, we could check to see whether or not it's running. And to do that, we can run systemctl status docker, just like that. And we can see a couple of problems here, actually. First of all, it's not running. It's actually inactive. Not only that, it's disabled. So what we're going to want to do is take care of both of those problems. So to get Docker enabled, we can run sudo systemctl, enable, and then Docker. I'll press enter. And if we check the status again, we can see that Docker is now enabled. And what that means is that Docker is going to start automatically when we start our computer or server or whatever it is you've installed Docker on. We want to make sure that it's always running, but it's still inactive, so to fix that, what we can do is just change this to start. We can run sudo systemctl start docker, just like that. And if I check the status again, we can see that not only is it running, we actually get some logging information down here. So, so far so good, we actually have docker running on this computer. So now let's give docker a test run to make sure that it's actually working. And to do that, we can run sudo, and then docker run, and then the container that we actually want to run is called hello world. Just like that, I'll press enter. And I get the message here, hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. And it gives us some more information here. So, well, everything seems to be working and that's great. Now, one thing that we might want to fix though, is the fact that we had to use sudo to use Docker. There's nothing wrong with that, but it would be a little easier if we didn't have to do that. So what we can do to fix that is run sudo usermod dash lowercase a uppercase g. And what this command will do is allow us to add a user to a group. In the group we actually want to add a user to is the Docker group. And the user that we want to add is our own user. In my case, it's J. You can see that right here. That's my local user. And that's the user that I want to add to the Docker group. And that's all there is to it. So now that we've added our user to the Docker group, we have to actually log out and then log in in order for that change to take effect. So I'm going to do that right now. Go ahead and log out. And now I am logged back in. Now what's interesting is that off camera, I tried to run the Docker command without the sudo command in front of it and I actually still got a permission denied error. Now, honestly, I've never seen that before, but I did reboot my laptop and that solved it. And I'm not really sure why. So if you log out and log in and you still can't run it, then that's why. But anyway, now that I have rebooted my computer, I can run this command as you see here without sudo and it works just fine. So there you go. That was the process of installing Docker on Ubuntu. I hope that was helpful. So at this point, you should already have Docker installed on your computer and you should have already run the Hello World container as we've done in this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to run another container and we're going to learn even more about Docker. And that video is already up on my channel, so I'll see you there.